The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Back down, that will be the end of it. There's no way you can Why are you so it. confident about that? Because I'm just an odds maker, and I have a good gun instinct. I've had one my whole life. I've made millions in the business world, Sean. I've been very successful. Thank God, in this great country, I've been blessed. Wait a minute. So don't, don't you bet on facts? For example, everybody that I know that is successful in the betting industry, you know, they usually don't go just by gut instinct. They use a lot of information to sort of back up the feelings that they have. They don't allow their Correct. feelings to overcome them or overwhelm them. They're, they have more a, a greater sense of objectivity, if you will. Kind of correct, but what I would say is the only fact is the final score. What you're going by, what I've gone by for 27 years as America's number one odds maker, is what I've gone by is clues. I'm almost like a police detective, and I look at 20 clues, I put them together, the puzzle appears in front of me, and I say, that looks likely. I got at least a 60% chance of winning, and then I make my bet or I give my prediction to, to millions of clients. And I feel the same way about Obama. I looked at his history and I said, first of all, if you are already president of the United States, you're not running anymore you already are sitting president why would you be worried about people seeing your grades in college why would that be a big deal that you'd have to seal it i mean if you got a couple of c's i mean we know sean he probably got an f in economics because you could see the results in the economy of the united states but but why would that stop people from voting for him 30 years later he got bad grades who cares so that didn't make sense to me and then i said Everyone knows his classmates have not come forward at Columbia, but they have come forward at Occidental. Quite a few have said he was a lousy student, smoked a lot of pot, went to Marxist meetings. So tell me, how did he get into Columbia? And then if he's afraid of showing his Columbia records, he probably got bad grades there. So how did he get into Harvard Law School? And then in the year 1981, right before he entered Columbia as a transfer student, in his own book he says he went to Pakistan, right, on a trip with a buddy. And yet you couldn't get into Pakistan with an American passport. So how did he get in? I kept thinking that's another interesting clue. And the answer to every one of these in my gut, and by the way, Harry Reid opened, opened the door for me to do this. He's my U.S. Senator, right, majority leader. And he made a guess about Mitt Romney's tax returns, and I've got standing as a classmate and a former vice presidential candidate to make a guess about Barack Obama. So I made my guess, the same as Harry Reid made his guess, and I said this guy got into college as a foreign exchange student with an Indonesian citizenship and passport. It explains everything, Sean. It makes sense. You're not the only one to suggest this. Trump was on this very program suggested the same thing, that if, if he looked, for example, at student loan applications or student applications to these universities, that it might say something or it might be something embarrassing. Not necessarily that he was born abroad, but there, there's something there that they certainly don't want. Now, Trump has said that millions of dollars have been spent sealing or concealing these records. Do you, we, do you know that to be true? No, listen, here's the only thing I know that I think is the right way to handle this. Donald Trump, by the way, is a good mutual friend of one of my best friends in the world, Lee Lipton. And Donald always reads all my commentaries. Lee sends it to him. So I know Donald got this idea from seeing a college classmate. I've been writing about this for a year and a half already, but I never came out and spelled it out completely in one article like I did at my website, Root for America, and Blaze, and, and Drudge, and all that. So Donald saw that, and here's what I'd recommend to Donald. Donald should put up a million-dollar reward to any employee in the admissions offices of either Occidental or Columbia. You know, I'm not a billionaire. I can't do things like this, but Donald can. And he should solve this well, now. Hang on a second. You just were bragging what a big millionaire you are. I'm so. not a billionaire, though. I can't put a million dollars up, and that's the kind of money I think it would take <laughs> to get someone to come forward, a liberal who loves Obama, to come forward and spill the beans and have a photocopy of Obama's admission uh, to Columbia or Occidental or even Harvard Law. I say put a million dollars up. I'm a small businessman, Sean. I say a billionaire should put a million dollars up up to get someone to put up or shut up and I think someone will something will break something will happen someone will come forward because there's a lot of pieces being put together as we speak matter of fact today at four in the morning my phone rings four in the morning and my cell phone's next to my bed just in case of an emergency and it, it's a guy named Charles C. Johnson who's an investigative reporter for Breitbart.com he tells me he just saw my article from Jakarta Indonesia where he is and he says he can prove that Obama 
became an Indonesian citizen as a little boy. So he said, your story makes sense. That's how he got into Colombian Occidental. He used that Indonesian citizenship. And I'm sitting here in Indonesia with the physical proof. I'm bringing it back to publish a Breitbart article and write a book about it. So it's interesting that he saw that article and thought to call me and say that. The whole puzzle is coming together, Sean. You know, it's very interesting to me because I don't know the truth of it. All I know is that every time he asks for anything from Obama, it becomes a bigger deal than, than it ever should should be for example the birth certificate you know i kept saying during the whole thing and i was never really i never considered myself a birther just just release the stupid birth certificate i right. mean and i just it kind of never made sense to me and you know here's the president a lot of effort obviously has gone into preventing people from seeing this background now the only reason i would say this is relevant is this is this is the whole fundamental this is their attack against governor romney release this release this release this release this and I guess if, if, that's, if that's the way they want to play hardball, then maybe it should be reversed. In that sense, that's why your column caught my attention. Right, and I think there's two reasons. And I don't know what's there or not there. I have no idea. I have no clue. I have well, no suspicion. Uh, I have no theories. I'm listening to yours, but I don't know what's there. I don't have well, a clue. And neither, and neither do I, by the way. I've been very upfront in saying Vegas Odds Maker is, got, is playing a hunch, and, and I think my hunch is better than Harry Reid's, and I have more standing to make it as his classmate than Harry would have any idea of knowing the tax returns of Mitt Romney, who, by the way, has paid millions of dollars in taxes and has nothing to be ashamed about. But I think there's two reasons why this is important. One, it calls Harry Reid's bluff. And by the way, where are Harry Reid's <clears throat> Harry Reid's tax returns? Here's a guy who entered the U.S. Senate with nothing. And 30 years later, he's one of the richest men in the Senate. How did he do that on a $170,000 salary? That's one of the great mysteries of our time. So I would ask for Harry Reid's tax returns. Two can play that game. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, number two, it, it answers Axelrod and Obama. You know, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. And number three, Three is the big one. I mean, this is one. I'm not an attorney. I'm not an election expert. I'm not a citizenship expert. But, Sean, if, in fact, he did go to Columbia and Occidental as a foreign exchange student and accepted loans and scholarships as such, either he was a fraud then, in which case he can't be president of the United States, or he was a foreign national then, in which case he can't be president of the United States, all of which leads to several major problems for President Obama. So, no, I, you know, well, look, it's, see, you may be out on a limb here, but, you know, where it's certainly, co I, I think from the vantage point that if they're going to demand everything from Romney, then I think demanding everything back is certainly fair. I'm not going to jump to any conclusions on it, uh, but I do appreciate your time, and if you continue to update it, get more information, let us know. Yeah, all my updates will be on my website. It's rootforamerica.com, and right. I'm a patriot, Sean. That's what now I what do. You, I now, now, you, well, you need to go vote for Romney in Nevada mm -hmm. and cut the crap. I mean, I'm just I'm being blunt. All right, Sean, love your show. Good all right, man. buddy. Thank appreciate you, it. Patriot. All right. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.